Okay. It's 9.30. Do you know what time it is? It's time for the Coffee Break Chat with host Mike Bellamy on WICC. All right, welcome into the Coffee Break Chat. Joining me in studio, Bridgeport Mayor Joe Gannam, also a uh, gubernatorial candidate on the Democratic side. Joe, good morning. How you doing? Hey, it is my pleasure to be here. How you doing? It's great to have you here in studio. All right, let's, let's first start and talk about the debate that never was. All right, we had the Republican debate last night. Four of the five candidates participated. Uh, Mark Bowton did not participate in the debate. He had uh, family issues, apparently, that was going on. But we also were in discussions on planning a debate between you and Ned Lamont. You were willing and able on the two dates that we had bounced around. There was the 25th, and then there was today. We were going to try and get one a, a debate today, later on tonight at Fairfield University. Ned Lamont never agreed to either of them. Each one he said he had a prior commitment for the first one, and then he said it on the second one as well. So it wasn't as if he was in, we were down the road, we were in the planning he just never agreed. Now, what reasons why he wouldn't be willing to debate, I don't know what those reasons are, but each time he said that he had some prior commitment on both dates. We were committed. We, we had it on our schedule. We were told he canceled, and then he started saying we were lying, yeah. and we never had it uh, scheduled. We were in communication with you guys uh, back and forth. I had cleared my schedule. It's important. The listeners for WICC in this part of the state are important. They need to um, have an opportunity to hear us. Um, agree or disagree, but if you're going to run for, for statewide office or public office, you need to make a commitment to make yourself available. And to, look, I've been open about things that are comfortable to talk about, things that are uncomfortable to talk about. That's what this is about. I've tried to do that as mayor, and I thank people certainly with the honor to continue to serve as mayor, but also as a candidate for governor and the thousands, 32,000 that have signed my petition. Alum. So I don't know where he's coming from. Mm -hmm. I invite him if his, if his campaign's listening. Uh, today, he's to aware. Call in. Yeah, yeah. We can call in this morning. We can debate. It doesn't have to be a debate. If he doesn't want to debate, if that bothers him, we could have a, a cordial discussion. But let's talk about the issues that are important to this part of the state in Connecticut, whether it's jobs, uh, people talk about a casino, cities, uh, the need for vibrant cities, this great city that we're in right now, the vibrancy and how it impacts cities and communities, suburban communities, every city in town, good quality education, uh, the environment, we're on Long Island Sound, uh, but jobs and, and, and reducing at least I like to think the property tax burden, among others. So Let's talk about the campaign, Joe. It's one thing to campaign in Bridgeport, coming back to Bridgeport, winning re-election here. But going into New Haven, I know that you and, and Mayor Harp had developed a partnership when it comes to a casino or even the Amazon deal and those types of things. But kind of kind of tell us what it's been like going around the state. We see out on the... Uh, uh, out on the, the shoreline a little bit more in Brantford, New London area, and sure. stuff like that. What, what's it been like, the reception? It is, it is good stuff. I think what I found, the more and more I go around Connecticut, the more I understand the importance of, of this pl the place that, that uh, this city, our state's largest city in this region has, and the, and the commonality of challenges that we have. Bigger and smaller communities, people trying to make ends meet, just regular working hard, trying to raise a family, trying to... Um, deal with high taxes and, and, and opportunities is the same everywhere. For me personally, there's been a, a real warm um, and rewarding reception when 32,000 people, never been done before in the history, the Democratic Party for candidates statewide, never been done historically to have that many people sign and allow, in this case me or anyone, to get on the ballot that way well, through a grassroots effort um, has been really stimulating and rewarding. And, and knowing that people, look, I think they're doing it, and I appreciate it because they're second chance and but they also believe i could be a good governor but they're also doing i think from their and i mean this in a, in a, a, a flattering way or appropriate way in their own self-interest because they put me on the ballot gives them a choice and hopefully a better choice for someone who's got experience running uh for 14 years state's largest city with with uh, certainly with my, my mistakes which i'm, I'm certainly comfortable talking about but with some uh, some successes that others people have not really even matched so so look as far as ned not showing up he's got an opportunity to call him today if he doesn't want to call him today, is it because, you know, people in this part of the state need to hear from both candidates? I want, you, you mentioned the casino and, and, no, and sure. New Haven and Amazon. That is a huge development opportunity with jobs, between five and 7,000 jobs. I usually just like to say that twice or say it slowly. Five to 7,000 jobs, good jobs, with not a goal of taking jobs away from another part of the state, but by creating an entertainment center uh, with restaurants and, and, and hotels and retail that will light this part of the state, including the city, of course, on fire both financially and as a destination. And, and he's equivocated on that. He's waffled on that. 
He's not supportive of the casino. Anything that I've heard, the closest thing I've heard is, well, I wouldn't stand in the way of it. Well, I've heard that from, from three, four governors o over the decades, as have the people of the city of Bridgeport and the people of the region. That's not what we need. We don't need a waffler or somebody who equivocates. And um, I think that's probably one of the reasons you didn't want to face your, the audience or the listeners here today, because they know he's against the casino. If he's governor, if we're not going to get the casino, I think people need to know that when they go into the voting booth on August 14th, just like they need to know everything about me as well, which I'm open to talk about. Joe Gannum, as we said, mayor of Bridgeport gubernatorial candidate on the Democratic side. We'll take a quick break. Traffic and weather here on WICC 600. Right now we sit at uh, beautiful 71 degrees as we look out on the great city of Bridgeport with its mayor, Joe Gannam. He's also running for governor. August primary, August 14th here on WICC 600. We uh, attempted to get a debate between Joe Gannam and Ned Lamont. Ned Lamont never committed to a debate, uh, at least through us. I know you guys are, though, scheduled to debate Next week, right? I think, aren't you at Sacred Heart University? If he shows. Yeah. If he shows. He didn't show here. We got an empty chair here. Ned, you're welcome to join us. Call in if you want. Take your shots at me if you want. I mean, we've had a, a pleasant disagreements on a number of issues. People are entitled to hear that. I'm here. I think it's important for this part of the state, whether it's about jobs centered around a casino, our cities, keeping down property taxes, uh, good pu quality public education. I'm willing to open it to discuss that and my vision for Connecticut. I like to say to build a new Connecticut economy that works for everyone. Yeah, you know, and, and what's interesting, we, we just had the debate last night with the Republicans, and those questions apply to both you know, all candidates, not just the Republican candidates, questions about school safety and keeping schools safe moving forward, uh, the pension costs up at the state and uh, the, the future that's going to apply in that particular area. Also, millennials, how do we keep younger individuals in the, in the state of Connecticut to stay here? And also, going up to Hartford, uh, you know, Mayor, you're going you're gonna to do something that you possibly isn't as familiar here in Bridgeport, but you're going to have to work with Republicans, you're going to have to work across the aisle. Let's let's start there. What sure. what will you do? What can you bring when it comes to being able to work with an sure. opposition party? I'll give you my. Certainly want to talk about all these. And again, I wish my opponent was here so that people could hear his views. Uh, mine comes from a basis of experience, 14 years doing this job, knowing how to balance budgets, know how to work with diverse groups to meet your common goals and, and common ground for common goals. I don't know where, where he's coming from on this. I wish he would call in so people could hear him. It's important to Bridgeport and the region, all your listeners. On, on working with people, um, when I first, as a very young man, got elected mayor and the city was in bankruptcy, the goal was not only just pull it out, but to pull it out with some degree of success. And it meant working between labor and management, business and public sector, community groups all coming together, elected officials on all from all levels of government and all party persuasions. And a Republican or independent governor at that time needed his help. Um, we had uh, federal elected officials that stepped up with us. We had uh, some Republican legislators. But more, I think more recently, I'm one of the few that can point to successes if for my city, for our city, state's largest city, in things like uh, getting a bill passed with bipartisan support to reduce the pension costs. All these big cities, and like the state, have pension issues. To reduce the pension costs and save the taxpayers money while protecting uh, the pensions. We had bipartisan support on that. That's the only reason it got passed. We had a, um, a, a, a environmental cutting-edge technology called a thermal loop for the downtown. It's, it's zero carbon footprint. It uh, will provide heat at cost efficiently for Bridgeport. We're the only community, only city in the country that will have it. The only other places in the Amazon headquarters in Seattle, they have it for theirs. And we had bipartisan support to get some pieces of legislation through the General Assembly with that as well. But the best example, I think, at least getting through the House of the Representatives this year, which it hadn't done before, was with bipartisan support for the casino or the recreational center, whether it was MGM or whoever, open, transparent process, which I stand for. Um, and so those are examples that he certainly can't point to. He's never, he's never done government before. It's nice to fly in every, whatever it is, four, eight, 12 years and say, I want to fix a problem and then, then leave again or go back to whatever your lifestyle might be. But it's different than to try and kind of slug it out on a day-to-day -day basis as a mayor has to do or as a, a governor has to do or legislators or other public officials, even councilmen. So that's what we've been doing. By the way, last night on this whole issue of transparency, and I've tried to make it as a, a, a much a part of government as I can locally since uh, with my mistakes made and my lessons learned, um, I asked him to file a financial disclosure. He's got... Uh, tangled assets, I'm sure, everywhere that could create conflicts. And I'm not saying he has them or he hasn't, doesn't have them, but the public has a right to know. Just like they have a right to know everything about Joe Gannum, 
they have an every, need to know everything about him and his family. And if he's got three hundred million dollars in in wealth, and I've got a three hundred million dollars less than he has, <laughs> we can still both agree that we should disclose our finances. Whether uh, he or members of his family are on boards that may have conflicts with the state, might do business with the state, um, that's fair for people to know about. Country club, uh, as he talked about, they, they got a lot of flack from from people last night because he belonged to a, what they called an all white. Um, country club, and he only resigned because it was uncomfortable for his campaign. Um, those type of things are look, they're fair game for people to know about. You need to know a person's character. You know my, my flaws in my past, but I think hopefully you know my strengths, and that I bring the best experience. I hope that he would put himself to that test, and even again, he still got a chance to call in this morning. Bridgeport Mayor Joe Gannum, also gubernatorial candidate on the Democratic side here on WICC 600. Uh, one of the things that Ned did bring up in the debate was while campaigning, the city of Bridgeport. Um, is, how are you balancing the two? What's a typical day for Joe Gannon? Sure. How is the city getting its sure. fair shape? Sure, and there's so matter? much commonality, whether I'm sitting behind my desk, whether I'm here at ICC, uh, whether I'm in the neighborhoods. Yesterday we did a bio, a, a bio swale environmental project in the uh, east side. Uh, earlier in the, or sorry, I should say uh, last week, we did the um, groundbreaking for the outdoor amphitheater which is bringing in Live Nation, a premier entertainment company, into the city of Bridgeport. No other city's doing that. We've got over a billion dollars of investment going on in the city. I don't know of any other comparably situated city that's got that, from Steel Point to uh, projects in the downtown with a new comedy club that opened downtown, a new restaurant that opened downtown. $400 million of that is in, a, is in the uh, restoration of the Poli Majestic Theaters, which goes back to my mother yelling at me saying, if you do anything as mayor, fix the Poli Majestic so Thursday nights in downtown Bridgeport can be what they used to be. Um, but that's $400 million going there. Steel Point, we're having a, a, we'll have a rally there on Monday for what's going on on Steel Point. So, so you can criticize from a distance. You've never been in government. Um, this is probably one of the most successful government administrations in the country. Held the line on taxes despite uh, cuts in, in funding. Helped to support our great superintendent in, in, in the school system. We need to do more there, too, as well. Creating jobs. Um, hiring 100 police officers. Making our city safer. I think statistics recently will, will show that we're making some gains there. But I always say this, and so he can be critical. If he wants to kick the city, he did it to Bridgeport. He called Hartford a mess. He said he was, uh, he was suffering fools in New Haven. If there's an insensitivity or a disconnect or something you don't like about people living live in cities, um, it's resonating, and, and, and that's, that's not what we want. Cities are always work in progress. God, we have so many challenges, so many things we could do better. I talked about the good things. There's so many things I could, I could say that we're not doing well enough, no, no question. And, and, I, and I respect people that have that, that viewpoint. But don't kick our cities. Don't criticize. I'm 24-7 as mayor. Um, I'm committed wholeheartedly. Um, to everything we're doing is, and, and as long as we keep pushing in the right direction, we're going to be successful, more successful every day for the people of the city. I hope and believe it's that same framework, it's that same framework and a focus, frankly, on cities as the engines, I call it, all of our cities, to be the engines that can drive a new and better Connecticut economy for, for people of every city in town. When the city succeeded with opportunities, everybody succeeds. That that's why it's common, there's a commonality of, of what I'm doing um, uh, with this campaign and Certainly, I hope, doing a good job running the city. Joe Gannum, Bridgeport Mayor, also a gubernatorial candidate on the Democratic side. We're going to take a break for traffic and weather. 951 at WICC 600. Joe Gannum is here in studio. As we said, he is the mayor of the city of Bridgeport, and he is also the uh, petitioning candidate on the Democratic side uh, running for governor. 32,000 signatures uh, saying that they like to see Joe run and uh, be a part of of the August 14th primary, uh, and as we said before, you know, you had said that your past is is an open book, and 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 when you came back to the city of Bridge, Bridgeport and ran for mayor, a lot of the people that I'm sure in churches and in different forums that you spoke to took it personally because they were in the city of Bridgeport when this happened. When you tell your story, and when people in a Hartford or a New Haven or a New London they just attach your name to that, don't know details. When you tell the story of your past, how, how are you going about that? I mean, you say you're open, you say you're transparent, sure. you want to talk, but how Absolutely. how is that being resonated in other uh, parts of the I think people state? are, certainly the, the room gets quiet, as it should be. And I'm a different profile, I don't mean this in a flattering or unflattering way, I'm a different profile for public office, certainly at a, at a governor level, maybe even at a mayor's level, than people have actually had kind of had that, I don't want to say entertain, but kind of make a decision on. 
So to make it easier for them to make a decision, or at least to fill the glass, if you will, from, from the perspective that I like to bring uh, about myself, about my candidacy, and what I can do for, for the state, but for, you know, this, you say this big thing, the state, but for every individual, hopefully, I'd hope they look at a lot of things. That may, maybe you might come away with the impression that um, despite maybe some apprehension by some, and in a very difficult and improbable election result, the people of Bridgeport to a certain extent were right. That they allowed me the opportunity. Hopefully it was a, it was a human forgiving thing, but hopefully it was an intellectual decision that maybe Joe Gannum, um, despite everything that happened, if we look at the good and, and, and the not so good, let's say it kindly, that we're going to give him a second chance. And if he lives up to the commitment of one, Oh, transparency and accountability, which which I've talked about and did in that, at that point, that um, that if he can live up to the commitment on on uh, substantial, uh, tangible results, as I did first time, whether it's hiring more police officers with community policing, uh, creating jobs as we're doing now at over a billion dollars worth of investment in the city of Bridgeport, um, balancing budgets by holding the line on taxes despite cuts, and trying to improve the quality of education. In public schools, despite the fact that we're underfunded and we're not from Greenwich, we, it shouldn't be your zip code that dictates uh, whether your, our children get the best quality of education. That maybe, just maybe, they can look at the example. And then I would say, uh, on a positive note, if 32,000 people, registered Democrats across Connecticut, signed a, 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 an op, a, the petition for me to give me the opportunity, again, historic in nature, to be on the ballot, that there's good, I think, at least the opportunity for openness on people's parts. And of course, then it's up to me to explain to them that, yes, I am, based on my experience, based on my vision for Connecticut, based on my sensitivity to the people with the greatest challenges, whether they're in our cities, the cities, towns, across Connecticut, that I am the best person for this job. And, and a takeaway, and, and, you know, this is not to be um, biblical, but it's, it's, I did use this uh, for a perspective that I'd like to bring. When I did apologize uh, in church when I came back to Bridgeport, you know, it was told to me by a preacher, he said, look, uh, no matter what people want, if they want to be judgmental, they have a right to do that. If they want to be forgiving and accepting and, and evaluate a person or, or another for whatever it is, they can do that. But don't let anybody tell you anything different than, I think it was uh, Oscar Wilde that said, uh, uh, every saint has a past, and it, every sinner, uh, in my belief, and this quote goes, every sinner has a future. And if you look at that perspective, that there's, there's really... Certainly, this is not to minimize my, my, my transgressions, my, the things that happened with me, things that I did. Um, that um, there's no, that, that there is an opportunity, I'd hope and believe, um, to get past that. And then people can say, hey, wait a minute, there's a part of the, part of the guy's past that mm, I'm not so sure about. But really, if, he, if I am and can be as governor, as I hope that I've done as mayor, be the person who can best facilitate a better future for that person and their family, and, the, and they understand, you know what, the guy's got the experience. He took a tough place like Bridgeport. Jeez, those are all tough. And look at some of the progress they've made. Connecticut needs somebody who's how to fix the budget. He's done that. Connecticut needs somebody who understands the, the challenges of public education and funding, understands how to bring companies in from out of state to create jobs, not let them leave like the GEs of the world. Then, and, and uh, if your choice is me with that, somewhat transparent, somewhat humble, somewhat real who's done things, Versus someone who is, you know, flies in, says, hey, I raised my hand. I was here 12 years ago when there was a war, and I screamed and yelled. Well, that war is part of history, and we, we thank you for doing that. Um, and then fly back in and say, you want to be governor. And then fly back in uh, eight years later and say, I could still do a better job. As, as we kind of had a discussion, he's not on the ground understanding the challenges and the fight day to day that people are struggling with. Never had a balance of personal budget. Probably never went shopping. They, they joked about how much the price of milk was. He didn't know the price of milk. And this is not to be critical, but, you know, um, eight bathrooms in a house. I mean, I don't point these out to be funny or to be joking or even to poke at them. But you can look at, my, at me, every element of it, and I've gotten hit pretty hard during this campaign by, by him. And people need to know, is someone sensitive, understanding, and the best person ready with experience to put Connecticut back on track? Uh, hopefully with the democratic values that, that, that I carry for, and hopefully the standard bearer for the party. Well, Joe, we appreciate you coming in studio. Thank you so much. Let's do this again. Absolutely. Let's do it again soon. Maybe we can even get somebody, an opponent in here. Well, you never know. <laughs> we'll, we'll bring somebody in here for you. Joe, thank you so much. Thank you so much. All the best. Thanks, WICC. Joe Gannum, as we said, Mayor of Bridgeport, also petitioning candidate on the Democratic side here on WICC 600.